Welcome, my name is Sophia and I will be your host for Voices of Creativity Online. With us today is Rena Wolzinger. Can you tell us about yourself and the work that you do? Sure, thanks Sophia. So my name is Rena Wolzinger, as Sophia said, and I'm excited to be on the show, which you guys have done an amazing job um, with so many episodes and I'm really excited to be a guest on your show. Uh, I have a very long background in creative work, starting when I was a little kid performing as a guitar player since the age of five. Um, I'm kind of a ham, so I love it. Uh, I've always studied music and graphics. I've been a comic fan since I was a kid. So I've, I spent my whole life doing that. Um, that led me to uh, study engineering, believe it or not. I studied design and went into designing cardiovascular products. And it's kind of the same same exact stuff that I learned how to do 3D renderings and uh, two and 3D renderings. Um, and I did that in medical and then I kept going in music and I've been, I opened a company in uh, 1992, Runs on Music, still going today. We do, uh, it started with just audio and I was doing children's music and world music on my record label and then expanded to video with really the, the advent of YouTube doing a lot of work in um, both audio and video media. So um, along the way, I was asked to substitute a class after I took a, I took some courses at Golden West Community College in audio and learned how to open a studio. And my professor retired and uh, they, said, they asked me if I could sub for a semester and then I stayed so I've been doing that for over 20 years, um, teaching a class somewhere. Um, in audio, ad, audio and video, I've done both. And my favorite stuff that I teach is audio post-production, which is audio for movies and games. Uh, I've had a full career of all media performing as a musician, um, having a label as a producer, producing shows, um, all of it. I'm still going. It's actually stronger now than it's been in a while with the pandemic being at home and people need help producing content. So it's super busy right now. Can you tell us why creativity is so important in the work that you do? I will. So creativity really drives my whole entire life and what I do. In fact, any job that I've had where I didn't wasn't able to be creative was a short-term job. So in I love creating, and I think what I love about creating is just the whole process and actually coming out with a product. And um, creative people are, I think, like me, where... It's so exciting to produce something. I get so excited when I produce a new song. For example, I, I get a really great beat going or, or some background and I actually call everybody and I'm like, hey, listen to this right now or watch this thing. I'm so excited about it. And that is really what drives everything I do. And when I see my work as creating something tangible, that's really all I want to do. And it, to me, whether it's music or art or a drawing or a video or anything, a dance, cool lighting, just creating stuff is drives everything. So when I have a job that's task oriented, like decide who's going to talk when and this like very kind of not creative, I guess that's when my brain kind of turns off and I'm not very productive. I am a very creative person um, and I love to share. That's just an important part during the time, this time here during the pandemic. I share every day. I've turned my backyard into a meeting place for creative people. So like, you know, people come by, we plan projects and figure out how to do it safely. Uh, my studio is indoor and outdoor, I guess you can say as well. I have a wagon even that I carry around in my projects now so I can do creative stuff all around town um, and work with people. So yeah, um, I don't know if that answers it, but creativity is for everything for me. Could you go into more detail about your history working in media? I sure will. So um, the important thing for me in media was how to share my media and also how to monetize it so um, I can purchase things, build up my studios. What I did was um, in, like I said, in 92, I opened my label, Renzo Music. I got a business license, um, all of the insurance, all the things it takes to open a business. And I started to get clients. And so I started to produce uh, first children's music. And I started working for school districts who were actually paying me to do work. And I also recorded, I had a ton of recording clients who needed me to record and edit their content. I had vocalists, choreographers who wanted me to change the speed of their music. 
Um, a lot of people in the dance world, since my kids were dancers, those were my part of my network. Um, and so I was able to quickly uh, make a living doing that. And then I also, um, as artists do, needed to diversify. So I opened a live music business where I had seven musicians working for me part-time on the weekends. And all week we did marketing meetings, advertising. So I had a live music where we did weddings and events uh, for years. And we still do some of that as well. So I was very lucky to figure out from the beginning how to monetize uh, the creative process and then have a business. And so everything that I've put in my studio and my work was paid for before I had to use personal assets, which was a, which is what I try to teach my students as well, to try to come up with a way to monetize it and make it work out. So in arts, being able to diversify, have several streams of creativity and income is a really great way to go. And most of my musicians, friends do that, whether they teach or do private lessons, do online lessons, um, travel and perform, all of those things are part of uh, what people do. And the video made a big difference because I found out very quickly that monetizing video is easier than audio. So I immediately acquired video equipment back in the tape days. I had a 1080 Panasonic, I don't even know if it was 1080, but a tape uh, Panasonic camera that was the big thing before digital happened and ran around with backpacks of tapes around the country. Actually around the world, I've been to several countries doing documentary work with that and learned how to do that. And I found out the skills are similar, you know, shooting. I had to learn about lighting and shots. And um, as I did with my other work, I have mentors for these things. So I have several mentors in video that taught me what to do, how to light, how to shoot, how to deal with tape transfer, all of that, how to edit. And then I had to kind of relearn it in the digital world, which was actually easier. And that's been um, a big part of what I've done ever since, like I said, ever since kind of YouTube came out so that there's a platform to put work on that's accessible to more people. I know you like to travel, so could you share where you've been? Okay, so <laughs> I've been a privileged traveler. And I'll tell you, growing up, I didn't get to travel except for we moved back east for a few years and I got to see the east coast um, by car. But I really didn't travel until I got married and I married an airline pilot. So I, all of a sudden, I didn't even know I liked traveling because I hadn't done it. I was able to go anywhere I want in the world when I had time, basically. So, um, and one of the things I'm missing right now is Japan. I've been to Japan three times. It's my favorite place just because everybody's so nice and helpful. It's also a center for the creation of a lot of uh, comic stuff. So I collect figures like right here at my desk is Batman Cosbaby, actually Batman and Robin, and I have all the villi villains. I have cost stuff all over my, my house and they make a lot of the stuff in Japan. So when I went there and saw stuff before it was released here, of course, I loved it. Um, and it has a city, but it also has um, the country where they have bowing deer and shrines everywhere. And I love Japanese food. So just, you know, places where they they feed six people and it's not expensive and that type of thing. I love it. I've also spent a lot of time in Europe. Um, my daughter studied in both France and London. So we visited there many times. Do you have any upcoming projects? I have a lot of upcoming projects. Uh, let's see. A, a big one that I'm really excited about that we're just coming out with our first episode is called Folklore Bites. B-Y-T-E-S, with my sister, Dr. Heather Joseph Witham. She was the folklorist on Mythbusters for the first two seasons. And she's been on um, about 50 different cable shows, the host of cake making and Halloween and uh, ghost stories, biography. She's been on so many. And she wrote for X-Files as well. And so we love to work together. And we wanted to do 10-minute episodes about different things in the folklore realm. So we're, our first episode is going to be about protest signs. And we're just about done. Uh, we're just finishing up the editing. It should be out maybe next week. We plan to do an episode probably once a month. She's super busy because she's teaching full time and it's crazy in her house <laughs> trying to do five online classes. So um, Folklore Bites is coming out. Um, and so it'll be on YouTube to start, and then hopefully we'll get it moved over to Amazon Prime as our goal. 
Um, I still produce Ion Entertainment with my friend Donna, and that's a show about, I would call it Be Celebrities, and it's really fun because it's people that I saw on TV on different shows in the 70s and stuff, and uh, so we produce that. I do a lot of online interviews for that, and everybody loves working together. That's a whole subculture in itself, and my sister and I are going to interview those people for one of our Folklore Bites. A big project I'm, I'm working on, I'm the co-editor of the movie documentary feature called Rush. It's about Richard Rush, who is the director of The Stuntman. At uh, that movie, he got several Academy Award nominations and starring Elliot Gould and uh, Steve Railsback, Barbara Hershey. So uh, we are editing. Um, in fact, the primary editor, Craig Railsback, who is Steve's uh, nephew, will be here uh, shortly today in my studio. We have um, like three terabytes of <laughs> interviews all shot in four to six K. It's like a big project and it's really exciting. So we're going for um, under two hours. So we've been editing that. And um, I just released two singles for the pandemic. One is called Six Feet Away and the other one is called Online Life. <laughs> and they were really fun. Um, those are on every streaming platform on the planet right now, over 200 under my label Renzone. And uh, I have another one that we're shooting um, 16 two minute dances with beautiful professional dancers um, shot some on green screen, some in a forest, some in studios, all different things in there going with a book. So we were hired to do that production. We just started that and shot the first four, uh, three camera shoots. So those are some of the things I'm doing as well as the live performances. We're still doing social distancing live performances. So yeah, just it's like exploded for me <laughs> in the last three months. That's all I can say. That's besides my full-time job. Great. So we will look forward to those. And we would like to thank you for your time and being on Voices of Creativity. Thank you. Thank you.